Every moment of your life matters. All nations. You need your Jesus. You need to elevate the kingdom of God wherever you go. You have something to be thankful for. So make your lifestyle one that glorifies God. Be born again is to be birthed into the kingdom. The, the, the Christian life seems to be the one in which we live in the very presence of God. I want you to write down these key scriptures. Let me see where are the key scriptures. The key scriptures I want us to have. Oh, before we go to the key scriptures, the theme of today's message is, and we know. And we know. If a Bible scholars actually make a statement that Apostle Paul, who wrote this, made an audacious statement. Because listen, he was talking about something that he believes God does. And if he was not right and he was actually kind of a figment of his imagination, then we are, we, we are in trouble. Are you following what I'm saying? This is what I'm trying to say. And I know that Brother Christian will give me $5,000. If that is not a statement of truth, according to Brother Christian, I'm in trouble. I'm indicting myself. And in some places, I may even be ca causing perjury by saying something that he has never thought of doing. Are you following me? So, this must be a prophetic release. It must be a revelation knowledge that God gave Apostle Paul. Because he said, and we know. Are you following me? He said that we know. He claims that there is something that Christians are aware of. And that is what we want to. The Lord asked me to just expansiate that because, you see, we are talking about divine orchestration. Means that God is working. And if God is working, then number one, you have to know the person you are calling God. You have to know him. And you want to know his attributes. You want to know who he is and how he operates. And then you need to understand his ways and his, his, his works. Because we say that we know that all things are going to what? work. If you don't know the work of God, you will not be able to decipher. You wouldn't even know when God is working. So it is important to understand the works of God. The Bible said that the Lord revealed his works to the children of Israel because they, are, they were so transactional. They were so like, give me, give me, give me, give me. God said, if that was his one, I'm going to play it. You want bread? Here's bread. You want water? Here's water. But when it came to his ways, his thoughts, his ideas, what he intends to do, he revealed it to Moses, how did that happen? Moses desperately went before God and said, Lord, you have been using me. Yes, I saw that burning bush. I saw that. But you've been using me. And you say you are this, but I don't know you. You see, he is one of the most sincere and honest ministers that ever lived. Can you imagine a person that heard the voice of God? There is no intermediary. He heard the God immediate, meaning that nothing has to interpret. God spoke to him. But he woke up and he said, Papa, I beg. I know Sabio. I don't know you. But he didn't end it there. He said, I want to know you. And Moses said to the Lord, show me your ways. Show me. Wow. Show me. Many of us in our marriages, we fight ourselves when we don't like something. Can you sit your wife down and say, my dear, show me your ways. Who are you? I don't know you. Yes, how many years? I don't know you. You know what we do? We throw rocks. You are like this. You are like that. You see, you are making some perceptions and some assumptions based on what you see. And many, many of the things we complain about are not substantiated. They are emotionally driven. They has nothing to do with truth. That is why it evaporates very quickly. You get angry for how many minutes do you get angry? I want to test. How, long, how many minutes do you get angry over your children or your money or your wife or your husband? I want to do the test. Sister Obi, what is going on? Uh, do you have anything against my brother? He's laughing and saying, ah. The, the reason is because um, <laughs> Moses set the pace for us. Moses didn't know certain things about God. Do, do, you, do you remember when God says, I'm going to give up on the Israelites? It is more of what Bible scholars call anthropomorphic. That is human-like. Because God is, God is not a man. But in order for us to understand him, he speaks our languages sometimes. 
so that we can understand. Now, in order for us to understand him, we need to speak his language. That is why Moses said, show me. Listen, many of you are not happy with Christianity because you don't know God and you know for real that you don't know him. When I say I don't know him, and so that, oh, that's, a, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about knowing. As in, you get to a point where somebody said, describe him. You may not be able to articulate everything, but the one thing that you know, you can talk about it. And so Paul said, and we know. Now, question, what do you know? What do you know about God? Listen, you have to answer this question. Don't answer it to anybody. Answer it to yourself. What do you know about God? It's a very dangerous thing. I work for God. I'm a minister. There are times I don't understand certain things about God. You know what I've been trying to do? I try to be as honest as possible. Usually when nobody is there. And I talk to God and say, God, this thing, I don't know it. Do you know I have doubted God before? Yeah. In fact, there are some things I don't understand. I, 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 cannot, I cannot fathom the suffering of little children. What is their problem? Yesterday something happened to me. I was, I, I, I cannot eat. I'm not a good eater. I ate and the food didn't want to stay. So it had to come out. And when I was trying to get the food out, I was struggling. I thought I was going to asphyxiate. And as I was thinking like that, you know what came to my mind? What if it happened to a child? Because I have become so skilled that I know how to regulate my airway and my, 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 my stomach way, if, you, if I should say that. So I was wondering if the person is 75 years old and is... That is why a lot of old people, you have to be around them. I am making a point here. I hate to see people suffer. I know we all do, but I want to make my exclusive statement. And when people suffer for reasons I don't get it, it gets me. It gets me. I go, look, why? Why? What did they do? What did they do? What is their crime? Lord, can you explain? That child that somebody smashed on the wall. Why? Why should that happen? I ask God because I want to know. Now, there are some things you would not know. <laughs> Understand? But God will give you the privilege of knowing him personally. It's such a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to know some things from God. And it makes you audacious. Sometimes you sound stubborn. Because you have come to know this. You, you, can, you can materialize it. It's when you were praying. And God opened your eyes and you saw something. And somebody come and challenge you about it. Oh, no, 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 that won't happen. <laughs> because it is my experience. What do you know? Do you know God? And we know the Apostle Paul said. Let's write these scriptures down. Let's write these scriptures down. I want to whet your appetite to the knowledge of God. Let's write these scriptures. Yes. Praise God. Thank you. I appreciate it. This fine gentleman here, he just so cool. Let's appreciate that young man. Hallelujah. God bless you. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to 18. And then Philippians chapter 10, verse 10 to 12. There's quite a lot of scriptures, but I've realized that Sunday service is not for too many scriptures. Uh, pardon me. Uh, yeah, it's right there. Philippians 3, 10 to 12. Romans 8, uh, 28. And please, when we show major slides like that, you want to show to our online guests. We want them to know what is going on in here. Thank you, team. You guys rock. God bless you. God, indeed, God bless you. Hallelujah. Romans 8, verse 28. Ephesians 1, 13 to 18. Some of these scriptures, I can sit on it and just... Uh, Paul was a lawyer, right? He was a lawyer and he was so bookish in his mind. And God stripped that thing off. And God started giving the Apostle Paul. In fact, aside Moses, he's probably the most informed apostle by way of revelation knowledge. That man, God, 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 God literally used him to floor Jewish traditions for 4,000 years. He came and said, let me explain to you why they had to walk through the Red Sea. 
Why they had to walk through the desert? Why, uh, the, the, as Moses lived the serpent, the apostle Paul brought that. If you read the book of First Corinthians chapter ten, he just brought all that into daylight. So when you, when this man is talking, you have to listen. And the goodness of the work of the apostle Paul was that, whereas he did not walk with Jesus, that is the what we call familiarity. There are many many people who you know your pastor so well. So you don't really care about what he says. That is fine. The Lord settled that for me personally. Because Jesus himself, the Lord of Lord laws, the one that was the God man, he lived literally on earth as God, did miracles I will never be, I may never be able to do. They rejected him. So the Lord told me that Richard, you are proud if you if if you get hard when people people reject you. Who are you? So those things don't get me. If you come to church and you are here to just investigate me or try to write me up or try and go and tell nonsense about me and I pick on it, then I'm an idiot. Because you didn't hire me. You didn't call me. Why should I get mad? Plus, Jesus went through the same thing. He says that what? A servant is not greater than a master. Even how I'll die, I don't know. I'm not asking to die, but I don't know. But if you're a true servant of God, those things doesn't hurt you. You have to continue to trust God. But let's come to the subject. The subject is that Apostle Paul did not know Jesus personally. He, remember, he was born in Tarsus, in Turkey. And he lived there for the best part of his life. He was sent to Jerusalem to join Gamaliel to study. Now listen, something is going on right now, today. If it was not the internet, what is going on in New York or even in Dallas, you wouldn't know. So Jesus was maybe a figment of his imagination. He was too young. So by the time Jesus came on, I mean, he came on, Jesus has already died, right? And I would say that they kind of like, you know, they, they miss each other somehow. Now, because he did not see Jesus personally, he had to passionately depend on revelation knowledge. And the reason why he did that was because he was using a scripture that he came to find out that he was in error. So his knowledge was incomplete and ineffective. And so God took him. He lived in Arabia for Saudi Arabia for 13 years. And those 13 years, he was doing two things. He was going to Bible school according to Jesus, not according to the law. And he was running for his life. Because just look at it. You know, Cochran that died, did for OJ. Can you imagine that they found out that, okay, he's an opposite person. Then we are looking for him. We want to arrest him. We want to jail him. We want to kill him. So this guy moves to Hawaii and he stays there for the rest of his life until the president is off and then he comes back. That is what happened to Apostle Paul. So later on when he came in, it was actually, I believe it was Barnabas who took Apostle Paul and took him to the disciples and said, this man that you used to hear that he was a killer, he has changed. And for the last 50, 13 years, he has been studying scriptures. Now Apostle Paul comes in with revelation knowledge. Can you say after me, church, revelation knowledge? Okay. If you have children, or if you are among a set of children for one father, you do know that like my father, right? Myself, Nanama, and Yah, we, I would claim that we know our father most. Because um, we got very close. But I, I didn't live with him a whole lot. But because I was his namesake and I was born on the same day, I think I had a special love. He loved me. Right? He even wanted to pay me, pay my way to uh, to Germany. He wanted to make me a, me a medical practitioner. He came to me at British Council when they said, Kofi, I want to put, to put you to Germany. And he literally did a passport for me within a matter of weeks. Those days. And I said, I'm not going to go to medical school. And his friend said, listen to your son. Because we are accountants and we failed. And so I let him do what he wants. My sister, Yah, actually lived and served him while she was going to college. My sister Nanama is the one that held him till he died. Listen, everybody knows daddy. But the three of us, we know him by revelation knowledge. I can tell you how he stutters. He's a stutterer. And I can predict when he's going to stutter and warn you to get out. Because Jerusalem belt can hurt you. Revelation knowledge is the most greatest asset that you need as a Christian. Because uh, it's not as if you are going to come in error and come and bring a new theory. But this scripture that is here, God will let something come out and you will get it for yourself. The voice of God told the prophet Elijah to go to the brooks 
Don't people go to the brooks every day? But when he heard the voice of God say, go to the brooks, what did that mean? It meant that no hunger for you the rest of your life. Do you understand revelation knowledge? Everybody works at applied materials. But he say you, you will be a tester or you will be in the, a clean room. It means something different. It could mean that you are going to be the reason why that woman that has cancer will not die. Because you have revelation knowledge. And that is why Apostle Paul, in my hometown, they say, Paul Paul didn't come early, but he became. Everybody thinks I'm talking about Daddy Paul. But Daddy Paul, I'm not talking about you. You know I love you. He also has a lot of revelation knowledge. I like him. Let's appreciate him. And so what do you know? Let us go to his books. You see, every scripture I I quoted here is from, I just realized that it's from Apostle Paul. Because God gave him that revelation knowledge. Somebody say it again. Revelation knowledge. Now let's pray the prayer of Moses. I want you to please, don't think I am playing you. Tell the Lord, show me your ways, oh God. Somebody say that. Show me your ways, oh God. I want to serve you well. Show me your ways. Hallelujah. Show me your ways. Open eyes, Lord. Go to two. Five. We want to see Jesus to reach out and touch him and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord. And help us to listen. Oh, be nice, Lord. We want to see. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. Oh, tell him again. Let it be your prayer. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shine in the night of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, oh, to see you high and lifted up, shine light of your glory pour out your love pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 hallelujah 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 open our eyes let's turn our bibles to the book of romans chapter 8 and let's go to verse 28. We will come back there later. Next week will be another speaker. But I want us to go back to the attributes of God. And one of the attributes of God is, the, is that God is holy. And by reason of his holiness, we must fear him. We're going to go back to the fear of God. That the dear will come and other, one of other my leaders will come up here. And we want to teach about the attributes of God. Because we want to know God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Can we read that? Romans 8 verse 28. Yes. Romans 8 and verse 28. Let's see. Yes. And um, I have just really, I don't know, I think you're getting some uh, blink moment. But Romans chapter 8 verse 28, I read from here to you. It's on the slide also. He says, and we know, and we know, and we know, if you are reading your Bible, you can underline it for the moment. If your Bible is underlineable, underline it. Or second, we know that all things work for the good, the betterment, the fulfillment, 
the enhancement, the blessing of those who love him. Which are the people that love him? Those that have been called according to his purpose. Praise God. That is the key scripture. And we know. Can we all say it together? Let's all read together. One go. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. How many of us have been called according to his purpose? Come on, lift your hand. I know you are one of them. That's one thing I know. Come on. Hallelujah. Say, I am a child of purpose. Oh, hallelujah. So, listen, friends. Divine orchestration thrives on our knowledge of God and what he is doing. Divine orchestration, it thrives on our knowledge. Your knowledge of God. Because like, like we just read, and we know what? All things. What are the things? They work. What is the work of God? For those, do you even know the identity of the people? That because God is doing it not for everybody. He put the word those. So the word those means it's exclusive. He didn't say for all people. God loves all people and he does miracles and kindness to all people. But when it comes to divine orchestration, taking your life in a direction that fulfills purpose, it is for those who love him. People are called according to his purpose. Praise the Lord. Okay. Divine orchestration. I want to give a quick illustration here for us. You know, there's a man. There are two men in the Bible. One is called Jacob. He had what I would like to call um, delusion. He came to a place where he was deluded. And then there's another man in the Bible called um, Job. Job had some amount of knowledge. He didn't know everything, but he had some knowledge. Let's look at Jacob. Jacob had a deep delusion. If you read the book of Genesis, chapter, because of time, I'm not going to read it, but you can write it down. He came to a point, after they returned from the journey and Simeon had been withheld. At that point, he had lost literally, I mean, virtually or in his heart. How many children had he lost? You don't know yet. It's true. But do you know what has happened? His, he had many daughters, but because of the story right up, there's one daughter that was listed in the Bible for Jacob. Diana had been raped. He had been fighting with his brother for how many years? Was it 14 or 21 years? He's been fighting with his brother. And life had been very bitter for him. In part, he feels twister. He, he was a twister. This guy would do things too. In fact, I was reading the Bible the other day and that the Bible says that they were actually conceived the same day. Do you realize that? That twins are conceived the same day? Huh? But there were different purposes for them. Can you imagine? Mommy and daddy are kind of having fun, right? And then something happens. And that thing happens, there are two seeds out of it. And out of the seed that happened the same day, there are two purposes. Mr. Admaku Nyamiche says this. Two children from the same room, uh, for the same womb, each of them has their own destiny. You know? And Jacob, before he could even see the sun, this guy was fighting his brother in his mother's womb. Hey! Can you imagine? Before he saw breast milk. And so this guy has done a lot of things. So I, 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 the reason why I'm saying this is many of us, we identify with Jacob. Many of us, we try the blessings of Abraham. No, you are not Abraham. Would you kill your son? Will you get up mumusiously and move from Iraq and go to Israel without any special direction? That is Abraham. Isaac, he was, an, uh, he was a malam. Al-Haji. He stayed in the room. He was always in the room. In fact, even when his mother died, then he got married. And the Bible says Rebecca was actually chilling with him. He was having fun. There was only one battle he fought in Gerar. And when he was fighting that battle, you know what happened? The Lord said, no, city, I'm going to bless you. And that day, that year, can you imagine in the day of dryness, this guy was the most, during COVID time, he became a millionaire. The only thing that happened to him that wasn't good was that his son deceived him. You know his son? Jacob. 
that his wife was part of the picture. Watch your wife soon. Hey, I didn't say that. Hallelujah. Jacob's delusion, he came to a point that when he realized, I think my brother just gave me the number. By that time, he has lost three people. And now they said the Oga over there, the eagle say, if you're going to return for more corn, we must, we must uh, carry your son. And he said, hey, me? No, I want you. Jacob never wanted to be a polygamist. He was forced into it. And how many of us know that our parents are forced into it? Our feelings force us into it. And then our desire to have more children, to make a name. He never wanted to be. And so when he finally got Rachel, this guy wanted to chill with Rachel for the rest of his life. Unfortunately, Rachel had a year in her. She stole his father's, her father's gods. And that thing brought a curse on her. And she died at an early age. And when she died, Jacob was thinking, two children of the woman I really wanted to marry, now them I would take care of. And we know that he said, don't play partiality. Every parent, you know they are favorites. We just don't talk about it. It, it is true. It is true. Because there are certain children that will do things that will just, it's like if you are dying, they will give you their life. You know among your children. You know them. Come on now. Come on. You know them. You know that this particular child, if he lives in Agege, if I call my son or my daughter, he go fly and come here. The other one, dad, I'm busy. Me and my girl, we are in Hawaii, dad. And so he was deluded because at the point where they made a claim that in order to live, you see, sometimes we blame Bible characters. Can you imagine that you have lost these many children? Only for your wife to come and say, uh, the guy that I work for says that we must sacrifice this. Or I must come and sleep with him. And then you will say, okay, go because we have to eat. Is that what you're going to do? So this is the words of Jacob. Everything is against me. Trust me, I've not suffered a lot in life, but I think I've said this before. Everything. Why not everything? My wife died. The woman of my life died. And now, according to my own knowledge, which is where we are going to nail it, according to his knowledge, what do you know? Joseph is dead. Simeon is gone. I left one story out. His own, his eldest son went and slept with his own wife. Jacob saw things though. So, don't be this preacher. Don't come here and talk down Jacob because you have not seen his trouble. Everything is against me. Everything is against me. You see, he was deluded because he fed on the environment. I've been telling people and I've been telling myself, I am removing from myself from anybody who is negative. I don't care who you are. In fact, if you fake and make yourself Jesus Christ and you come and you are negative, I'm not going to listen to you. Because it, it saddens the soul. It's like you make five steps forward and the person comes and says something so nasty and then he leaves. He, he, ah, ah, ah. The environment he lived in educated him and his knowledge was based on circumstantial evidences. The things that are around him. What do you know? about God. You see, he's crying for Joseph, but Joseph had revelation knowledge. Joseph had revelation knowledge. And so while he was in Egypt, did you ever hear this boy complain? Ever, never, ever. Two characters in the Bible that never complain. Joseph, Daniel. And they were the purest example of Jesus Christ too. Never. Why? Because he had the revelation knowledge. If you have revelation knowledge, you will stay where God has planted you. Because you know this temporary two years or six months or something that somebody is harassing your life is nothing. Your ship is coming. Your favor is coming. Somebody say favor. Favor. My favor is coming. My year of the lost favor is coming. Come on, somebody say that. My year of the lost favor is coming. Don't base your actions on your figment imaginative ideas. Base it on the knowledge of God. Let's look at another guy in the Bible. Job. Wow. 
They both, their name, their both names start with J. But they were very different people. I understand from the Jehovah's Witness book when we were studying it as children that even this man's buttocks were full of boils. Eh? I'm not being gross, but if you had a boil in your butt, would you have come to church today? This was not during his richness. You see, if you are there and gradually the economy removes your finances, it is okay. But when, if you are not a businessman, you will not understand what I'm talking about. You wake up one day and they said the stock market changed and you lost. How many do you have? Bill Gates. Listen, everything's gone, Mr. Bill. Everything. No, 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 no. Everything. Do you understand everything, sir? Do, what will happen to Bill Gates? We sit in church and we criticize Joe. One day he woke up getting ready to go to the market. He said, oh, it's gone. I am hoping that there was one cow in the house that he would eat. Or the food in the kitchen was still there. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, let's call the children. Let us pray and let us go and start again. Oh, no. They all died. They all. Not some of them. They all. How many were then? Ten? Seven. They all died. What do you know? There's a scripture I'll bring here. The Bible says in Daniel, I believe, chapter 10, verse 11, verse 32, that they that know their God, they shall what? They shall work strong and do exploits. And do exploits. When you know your God. I didn't say when you heard about a God. You know your God. Hallelujah. He said this. He said, at the time when those things were going on, he said, I know. I know something. Hey, I don't know everything. I don't know how the stock market works. That's why I lost money. But there's one thing I know. That my redeemer, did I tell you church at the beginning of the year that Christ has avowed himself that I the Lord, I am your redeemer. Somebody say, Lord, you are my redeemer. Okay, let me give you some, you know, some Hebrew and whatever. It doesn't matter sometimes, but let me just play Hebrew. Hebrew meaning for redeemer means redeemer. It means that God, you are going to lose some things. You don't redeem what is not lost. I am not advocating losses for you. But Jesus said in this life, you will have tribulations. You will have trials. There will be times that things will not go the way you want. But take heart. Because what? I have overcome the world for you. Somebody give a shout to Jesus. Praise the Lord. What do you know? I know my Redeemer lives. In fact, please, let's go over there and read it. That scripture. Can you put that scripture up? And then we will just wrap this up for another time. What do you know? He says, we're going to verse 27, from 25 to 27. He says, I know that my Redeemer lives. And in the end, at the end of the story, at the end of the journey, as I travel, I am only midway. I've only done 10 miles. I'm going 150 miles. I know somebody is with me. Somebody is traveling with me. I would like to speak into, please, I'm not being picking on her. Sister Nana, you will have to say that every day of your life. That I know this is a long journey, but I know, I know, I know. Hey, I'm hurting. Sometimes she gets up at night and she can't sleep. And then I said, my God, what can I do? I am, I am not a doctor. But you can say, I know. I know I, I, but I know. I know my Redeemer lives. He's right here in this room. My God, Lord, you are my help, Lord. It hurts. But you are my help. You are my strength, God. It doesn't even make sense for me to say what I'm saying. But you are. You are. You are my strength. My redeemer. He says that I know that in the end he will stand. He will not sleep. He will stand. Do you understand standing? When a big guy stands, he is taking action. He's saying, what did you do to my girl? How dare you? What do you think you did? Oh, do you think I was asleep? I've been watching you, by the way. He will stand 
on earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see God. He didn't say my spirit, oh, my flesh, you are going to live. David writes it in Psalm 27 verse 13, I believe. He said, I would have fainted, except that I turned and I believed that I shall see the goodness of the Lord, not after my death, but why I am still here and alive. What do you know? What do you know? And we know. I know a thing or two. Not a whole lot. It's a thing or two. Listen, ignorance is a disease. Ignorance. You can write it down. I didn't create it. It's there. When you are ignorant, ignorant is systemic. When you are ignorant, it is not just that you don't know something. It is that there has been a calculated effort to put you in the dark so that you perpetuate in your mistakes. Going somewhere and not knowing is a very painful thing. The Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians, it says, brethren, I do not want to have you what? Ignorant. Listen, God doesn't want you to be ignorant. In fact, the only thing he said we should be blameless and ignorant of is what? Sin. Can I stop and say something? Some of us, we are so informed though. How people do things, eh? When I say things, you know what I'm talking about. They know everything. They know what is happening in Iraq. They know what is happening in uh, San Antonio. They know what is happening in Africa. If I didn't know even what President Bush did when he was president of America. Do you know one thing they don't know? God. The ways of God. They don't. Oh, bring politics. And they, they know a lot about cowboys. In fact, they know that cowboys didn't win the championship this year. They prophetically know it. And they know that Pastor Richard is really hurt about the fact that cowboys didn't win. They also know, I heard the news somewhere, but Aaron was kind of opening his mouth and I heard something. That Chelsea, there's a team called Chelsea. I know them. That they are not doing well these days. They are, they are very well informed. In fact, I have an uncle here who is also very informed. Her uncle, I said it too. <laughs> praise our God. Praise our God. Hallelujah. Oh, we went somewhere and Brother Aero was trying his best to inform somebody, a very innocent man. He was trying his best to inform this man that Chelsea is not doing well. And then, and then I later found out that the person was standing there. And I said, ah, my God, why did he do this? Some people know everything, oh. But you bring something like, hey, can we pray for the sake? Ah, hey, hey. What do you know? Ask your neighbor, what do you know? Tell him that, by the way, ignorance is a disease. Hallelujah. You need to know something. The Bible says that let him that boast, boast that he or she knows the Lord. He understands. What is the scope of our knowledge of God? Listen, I intentionally wrote this down because I realized something. We don't know everything. There are some things we know. And in humility, in fact, if you don't combine humility with knowledge, it will, it will destroy you. Knowledge will make you think you are above everybody. You are not. You are not. In fact, I don't have a PhD yet, but the people that have real PhD, not the one that they call and give them $4,000, the one they have to sweat and get. They say as soon as you become a PhD, you realize you don't know anything. Because you have just taken a very narrow path and you were given something in a particular field. And that even field of endeavor, there is a dichotomy. There's something simple that you actually, uh, actually did. Because you do know that if you don't try very hard and try the next one, you will never be given that accolade. So when you become a PhD, you realize that you don't know anything. That is why Paul was so knowledgeable and yet he never bragged himself about his knowledge. In fact, in chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians, he said that I know a man who was talking about himself. That he was so knowledgeable. And Peter even said that Paul knows things. But Paul, look, we are going to read his scripture very, very soon. So, there are things we already know. There are things we already know. And then we have areas of ignorance. Now, that is the place that is very, very important. Any place where you are not informed, please do yourself a favor and learn. 
as a minister, listen, if all I do is that, oh, God is good, Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, if I stand here for three weeks, you figure me out, you begin to sleep on me. I have to study to show myself approved. And I, I desperately realize I don't know anything. I am not making a statement to just gain your attention. I know how much I don't know. Sometimes I read the Bible and I wonder, my goodness, I've been, uh, can you, let me tell you this church, tomorrow exactly will be 40 years on the dot. When I walked in the streets of Kumase, my city, and I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I've been thinking about that a lot. I was thinking I was the passing away of our father that is causing me to be quiet. But I have come to realize that, oh my God, 40 years, that is a whole generation. It's, um, Daddy dear, you know that place. I went to that street and gave my life to Jesus. Listen, if I stand here and I tell you that I was so informed, the Lord was speaking to me, I'm a, f I'm, I'm, I'm a fat liar. I didn't understand it. But there was only one thing I understood. The preacher said that he was going to the Bible school and he realized he lost his way. He asked and then somebody showed him that, go back this way. And that thing got me so much and I said, I give my life. And these 40 years, friends, if you were really going to do a bargain and God was going to look at things I've done in order to reward me, my God, I wouldn't even stand here. God has been so good. And in my ignorance, my failures, he's been so merciful. I am grateful to God. Any area in your life that you are not knowledgeable, please seek knowledge. The Bible says that in all your gettings, we must get things. But when you are getting things, get what? Understanding. And then above all, get to wisdom. Now, it is proverbial because when you read that scripture, you realize that it is concomitant that you put in knowledge. Because it is knowledge that sets the background for you. And then your, your knowledge will give you, you can use the knowledge to seek for understanding. And once you get understanding, you apply it properly at the right time, in the right measure, it's called wisdom. It's a skill. Wisdom is both a gift and a skill. Wisdom is both a gift and a skill. Solomon had the gift, the revelation knowledge, ability to look, discerning skill to be doing it. But you can also learn, the book of Hebrews says that by reason of knowing the word, you'll be able to discern between what? Evil and good and bad. So it's a skill and it's also a gift. If you learn very hard, you'll be, you'll be skilled in the work you are doing. But the Holy Spirit can give you unction like Moses. No, 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 not Moses. Joseph. So that you can literally predict the future without knowing. You see the difference between the two kinds of wisdom? They all come from God. Hallelujah. And then there is revelation knowledge. Now, we must know some things. There are some things that if you don't know anything at all, you must know it. If you can go to the next slide. We must know the attributes of God. God is holy. God is righteous. God is loving. All those things, you must know it about God. Because some people play God. They play with God. We don't play with God. Okay? Um, God is holy. And God is lovely. God is loving. God is omniscient. God is... And there are something that we call the aseity of God. There are certain characters of God that you can never become. Like he's all-knowing. There's no one day where you will know everything. You will not. In fact, save yourself time. And then God is everywhere. You are not going to be everywhere. In fact, you are sitting here. And if we have the material evidence that you are in San Antonio, I will actually move you from here because you must be a witch. Humans are only relegated to be in one place at the same time and the same conditions at one time. So you are not going to be God. But there are certain uh, attributes of God that are transmissible. For example, God is loving and God teaches us to love. God is righteous and he teaches us to be righteous. God is holy and he teaches us to be holy. Now, the holiness of God is a unique holiness. He is the only one. He is other. In fact, if you pick anything in the universe, I didn't say the earth, the universe, he's still going to stand out. You cannot compare him to anybody. Of whom can you compare the God, our God? But there's a certain amount of his holiness that he actually what shares with us. For example, he hates evil. We must hate evil. 
We need to learn these things so that we can understand the ways of God. If you don't learn it, you will play jokes with God. The Bible says God is not mocked. What a man sow, he will also reap. Please share this with the online audience. We need to understand the works and the ways of God. We need to understand the purpose and the plan of God for you. If you get to know that you are the happiest man. And then we need to understand the promises of God. That one, I think you should love it. Because whatever God has promised, if you don't know it, how do you apply it? Somebody sent me a gift I didn't know for a long time. Until I went in, somebody told me, this is for you. So when you don't know, then you will not what? No. Hallelujah. Now, God desires for us to know him. John chapter 17, verse 3. Jesus said, I pray that they may know you and me, the I, the one that you have sent. God desires for us to know him. Also, the Apostle Paul, the man that I've been talking about all day, he says something that I also love. It was his prayer. When you read Philippians, maybe we should read it and kind of cap it with it. Philippians chapter, Philippians chapter, chapter 3. When you read that scripture, you'll be confused because you'll be wondering why this man, is he kind of, is he having like an amnesia? Because you're the greatest. But he comes around and he says things that are very, very scary. It makes those of us that are pastors, we need to be humble. We need to be very humble because what Paul knows, I don't have even a bit of it. But this is what Apostle Paul says in verse 10. He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death, so that if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, it's not that though I had already attained. Wow. Wow. He wrote this book when he was in jail and was getting ready to be killed. And he was still seeking him. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend, get a deeper understanding get closer. Somebody apprehended you. No, get closer and come and talk in your face. I want to get deeper with God. I want to apprehend. That which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. And he even said that verse 13 if I add it. He says I, I can't know myself to have apprehended yet that I'm not close as I really want to be. But one thing I do. This is a secret of learning. When you stop learning, it's a posture. It is not an event. It is a process. When you stop learning, you invite mumushious ideas into you. I say that to everybody, including myself. When you stop, if you are a preacher and you stop studying the Bible, you become useless before the people. Let me tell you this. Because God is the one that is using you. God uses us sometimes in ways we don't even know. And how, how ugly and how proud are you that you want to come and stand before the church and talk when you have not heard from Who are you? Who, who do you think you are? That you don't know the voice of God and you want to come and stand before people? You think the people are fools? That they can just come and rattle? The Bible says, if any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If you ever gain access to this property to come and speak, you better wait on God, brother, sister. Seek God. Hear the voice of God. Because all nations' church members are not fools. They are very, very, very intelligent people. And we cannot bamboozle them. Now, he made an apostolic prayer. We'll read that one also and then we'll close. How many closings have I done so far? That's my last closing. Yeah. Ephesians, you, you have to love this one. My goodness. Uh, I love this scripture. <laughs> Paul is writing a letter to people that he, he is part of the church. He planted that church. And so he knows their, their, their pedigree. He says, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of the truth. I will give you a little pivot. I'm going to be very, very quick. Listen, the Jews, they know everything that we know in the Bible today. A long time ago, this Bible didn't exist. They were in scrolls in the Jewish land. 
It's like when you go to the University of Oxford. There are things there that you don't know, that I don't know, that you will never know until you become a student and they give you credit to go in there. Otherwise, you'll never know it. So the things in the Bible today that we play, play with, it was not, it was not ubiquitous. You couldn't find it everywhere. But God gave it to the Jews. And so when the message started going to people such as us, the foundations, you know, when, when, when Apostle Paul was saying Jesus Christ was the father of this and that, the Jews understood it. You? Hey, what is this? And so the Apostle Paul is basing that knowledge to show them the path they must go. Are you with me? Okay. And so you were included. We were not part, but now you were included. When you heard the message of truth, the gospel of the salvation, of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promise of the Holy Spirit. Who is a deposit guarantee? That is earnest money. God paid an earnest money that I want this child, so I'm coming back. So the Holy Spirit left and he's coming back. Jesus left, I'm sorry. And he is uh, guaranteeing our inheritance unto the redemption of those who are God's possession. To the glory of, 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 of the praise of his glory, I'm sorry. Now listen, this is why I read the scripture. For this reason, he said, you guys are now part of God's people. You are now inside the commonwealth. For this reason, ever since I heard, Ever since I heard that all nations were going to walk in divine orchestration. Ever since I understood that you fear God and God has a plan for you. This is what I'm praying for you. All. This is an apostolic prayer. He said, I do not cease. I heard about your faith in Jesus and your love for God's people. I have never stopped thanking God for you. And I remember you in my prayers. Pastors are supposed to pray for church members. I keep asking that the Lord, our God, Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you would know him better. I'm not saying you are mumu. You know something, but you got to be someone to say better. In Ghana, we used to have some food called chop better. Chop fe, chop better, chop, chop, chop better. If you eat better, you go live better. But, 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 job better. Better. Somebody say better. In fact, that is too African. Let's go. Better. Better. Hallelujah. I pray that the eyes of your heart, somebody say your eyes have, your heart, your heart have eyes. That is true. You can challenge me right now. You can sit here and you can see that you can see something that you don't see right now. People call it imagination. The eyes of your understanding, your heart, your heart has eyes. And when it is darkened, you just go by this. You see anything. You see a woman, you go to him. You see a man, you go to him. You see something, you jump in there. Because all you do is this. Listen, you are the number one loser in the world. Because every, everyone else, the Buddhists are talking to their gods. The Muslims are talking to their imams. You, you are just going with your physical eyes. That is why they get you. They get your children. Dig deeper. Get deeper understanding. Get to know the times. Remember, Daniel was going to die because Nebuchadnezzar said, there is something I need to know. And Daniel said, God, open my eyes and he came back and said, God is the one that gives wisdom and understanding. Listen, you need understanding. You need deeper things in God. Stop working with your physical eye. Everybody else is doing something else. I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened so that you what you would know him better. Tell your neighbor, please know the Lord. 